Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, and welcome to the next part of my Arch Linux mini series that I've been doing. Today it's a pretty quick one, how to get Microsoft SQL Server running on Arch Linux. Microsoft released the Linux version of SQL Server, what, a couple of years ago now, maybe not even that long. I guess part of their strategy is with their overall move to open source, but also in case you want to stick uh, your SQL Server instances into a Docker container. So having moved my day-to-day -day development environment over to Linux, it made sense that I moved the database system over to it. We had no plan whatsoever to move our database system away from the Microsoft stack. We're quite happy tied into SQL Server and actually it's a really good database system. But yeah, I've used MySQL and I've used other systems before, but you know what? SQL Server is really good and there is no reason uh, that we've got in any use cases to move away from it. You may want to talk about licensing and pricing, but actually when you're running it cloud-based, we find it's fine within the models that we want to do and the pricing is not that bad. You might be upset it's not open source, which is completely understandable, but from a commercial standpoint, Microsoft SQL Server is really good. And being able to run it on Linux was an exciting thing for me. It meant I didn't have to have a separate VM running Windows just for my development database environment. So it's pretty easy to do. There's just kind of three packages you need to install. So let's quickly go through how do you get SQL Server up and running on Linux. Okay, so this system is exactly where we left it in my last video, having just installed Visual Studio Code and .NET Core. Today we're going to install Microsoft SQL Server for Linux and the command line SQL Server tools. Now these are all provided as AUR uh, packages, exactly the same as the Visual Studio Code binary one was last time. So we're going to start by kind of grabbing all the Git files for that. So we go into our AUR folder we had last time and I'm going to save some time because I've already got the names of the packages written down. But if you just go and search for NS SQL Server, you'll be able to find it on AUR as well. Okay, so to start with, we're going to do a git clone from aur.archlinux.org and this one is msql-server.git. Then what are the next ones we want? We want ms Microsoft ODBC SQL.git. And the last one we're going to want today is MS SQL Tools. So MS SQL Server is the SQL Server instance. ODBC SQL is a set of Microsoft tools to connect to a SQL Server. And MS SQL Tools is what uses that to connect to the SQL Server and manage it. So you've got some command line admin tools. What we're going to do first of all is build the SQL Server. So if we go to MS SQL Server, and we're going to do exactly the same as we did last time, make package dash SIRC, and we're going to answer yes when prompted. Now this might take a while to install, so we're going to jump cut to the end of that. And once the package is created, we then just confirm we want to install it again. Job done, SQL Server's installed. The next one we need to install is the MSODB SQL. We have to do that before we do the MS SQL tools. The reason for that is that the MSODBC SQL is required by the SQL tools and it cannot pick up AUR um, dependencies automatically. So we go in there and then exactly the same thing again. Make package SIRC, confirm we want to install it. This should be a lot quicker to do. It's a tiny package. Download it, install it, remove things we don't need anymore that were uh, compile time dependencies, job done. And then the last one we want to install is the MS SQL tool. Same thing again, go into the folder, make package SIRC. Job done. So we now have SQL Server installed, but it is not yet configured. So the first thing we need to do is actually configure our instance of SQL Server and set up the license terms for it and our initial password we connect with. So sudo slash opt slash msql slash bin slash msql dash conf setup. So first of all, it asks us which edition of SQL Server we have. You can choose whichever is appropriate for you here. You can use the express one for 10 gigabyte databases on production servers. That's absolutely fine. If you've got a license for web standard or enterprise, stick them in there. Um, in this case, this is a development PC and I'm just doing dev works. We choose two for the developer edition license, which gives us unlimited database sizes, but no use in production environments. Do we accept the license terms? Of course we do. 
Now we have to give a password for the system administrator one. Uh, let's do guy robot. Nope, doesn't want guy robot. Let's do a different password then. Confirm the password again. A few seconds later, it deals with setting up the service and SQL Server is now starting. You now want to just make sure it's enabled to start every time your system boots. We'll do sudo system control enable ms SQL Server. And I like to manually start just to make sure it is running. We can obviously get status of it and see that it's all started. And now we can use another thing that's been installed called SQL command to connect onto it. So we can do SQL command to localhost with the username SA, put in our password. Then we can do create database guy robot go use guy robot go create table test id int not null some data in varchar max uh, primary key brackets id go select star from test nothing in there insert into test brackets id some data values one this is a test. Insert into test ID some data values two. This is another test. Exciting stuff, I know. Now, if we read from the test table, ta da, we have some data in there. There we are, we have SQL Server up and running, but obviously this isn't the best and most exciting way for us to edit and manipulate a database server. Yes, I know if you're used to using MS SQL command line tools, this is probably fab, but actually we'd like something nicer. Microsoft's SQL Server management tools has not been ported to Linux yet, which is a bit of a pain. So I'll be honest, I run that most of the time and I run that in a virtual machine just because I think it's the best way to manage Microsoft SQL Server. However, there is an alternative and it is getting better as the releases go on. So if we go into Visual Studio Code and we search for MS SQL, you'll notice there is a SQL Server extension, which is not bad. So we're going to install that now and I'll do a very quick run through of how we use that to manage SQL Server as well. And I say manage, at least how we run queries that are slightly better looking. So that's now been installed. So the first thing we want to do is create a file. Now, if you save this with the .sql extension, it will automatically change it to be a SQL type file. Alternatively, you press Control shift p to bring up the palette, search for lang for change language mode, and then press enter, search for SQL, press enter, and this will color code this as a SQL server file. Now, the extension goes off and does some downloads now quickly. So while that downloads, what we're gonna do is just have a simple select statement here. So we're gonna do use uh, guy robot, select star from test. And that should bring back the data that we had a minute ago. So to execute that, you can press control shift and E. And what that will do is ask you to choose a connection profile. So first of all, press enter to create a new one. And the host name we're connecting to is localhost. We're not gonna specify a database name, although you could do if you want to on there. We'll just leave it blank. We're gonna use SQL login. Our login name is SA for now, we haven't created a new one. We're gonna type in our password here. Do we wanna save the password? Mm, not in this case. Give it a name, not going to on this case. And now in the bottom corner, it says we're connecting. There we are, we're connected to SQL Server and we should get the data loaded up here. And that's the data that we inserted earlier on. And then we could do insert into test select ID plus two comma some data from test select star from test. The one thing I would say is that there is this lag of a couple of seconds when you execute in this way. The query is what takes time. It's whatever this interface is that Microsoft have created. But there you are, that's it. We have SQL Server in Linux. Now, the good news is if you've got a Windows VM or an existing SQL Server Management Studio, you can manage your Linux install as normal. And that's what I would recommend doing. For a quick series of queries, this is fine. For day-to-day -day full management of your server, it's gonna be a lot easier if you get SQL Server Management Studio until Microsoft come up with a better alternative. And for now, we'll leave it there. And again, that's it, nice and easy. So, how's it been?
fine. I couldn't tell the difference between running out on Linux or Windows. From a development perspective, the performance is fine. In production, we're going to be using Azure, so it's not quite the same. So I'm not going to be able to tell you how well this scales to running on a production system, but I have no reason to believe it wouldn't be based as it's the same core, and if anything, you've got Linux rather than Windows sitting underneath it. The one thing that's really lacking at the moment is management tools in Linux. I have a Windows virtual machine just for SQL Server Management Studio. Now, my gut is that Microsoft are going to come up with a cross-platform alternative to this at some point. If I had to try and read the future, what I would say is that I see Microsoft at some point coming up with a cross-platform uh, graphical toolkit. And at that point, they will move their UI components over to it as well. A lot of SQL Server Management Studio has been in .NET for a while. That can move up to .NET Core, and then they have to deal with the UI on top of it. But there's a lot in SQL Server Management Studio, and command line tools aren't as easy for administering some of the complexities of it. So I really do miss SQL Server Management Studio and I have a virtual machine that I solely use for two purposes, Microsoft Outlook and SQL Server Management Studio, and that's gonna carry on for the time being. I guess one thing that's kind of a bit frustrating occasionally is the fact that I have to use um, SQL Server authentication rather than integrated authentication. Now you can have integrated authentication, which is where you use your Active Directory credentials and who you're signed in with. For authentication. But as part of the move away from it, I'm trying to kill the whole of our Active Directory system so that everything moves over to Linux. And as far as I can tell, there was no way to just use an LDAP server or a completely third party way of authenticating built into it or somehow tying into the underlying Linux um, credentials that you've got built in to how you log into your system in the first place. So having different ways to access the credentials would be really nice, but I can live with that. Again, I'm gonna be connected from Docker containers for development and for prod, so it doesn't really matter as I wouldn't be using Active Directory for that anyway. So there we are, that's it. That's how you get SQL Server up and running. Nice, easy one. And hopefully if you've been looking to build your Microsoft development stack on Linux, you've now got a whole Arch Linux desktop environment, Visual Studio Code, the .NET, uh, core SDK and runtime, and Microsoft SQL Server and the command line management tools for it. So pretty much, you've now got a complete Linux development environment and you should be good to go. Next time, I'm gonna look on actually getting a Arch Linux virtual machine up and running in Microsoft Azure, and that'll be the last in my series from Arch. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.